this is Kyler Frisbee. My partner is Nathan Johnson, and you are looking at our website, which we created for our web mapping project in our advanced GIS programming class at Brigham Young University, winter semester 2014. Our problem statement with this project was to create a easy to use um, web map interface which people could use to learn more about church history. Several of these already exist out there on the web, but none quite as well put together as this one. So, as you can see, our website is entitled Church History Viewer, and it's located at kylerfrisbee.info. And that may lead you to believe this website contains some information about me, but it doesn't. It just contains our church history map. So it's a very simple, easy to use interface. Um, as you can see we have a description here in case you don't know what this website's for. It allows you to view church history events on a map. So you can view these however you want. You can click on a, a random point and see what, what it's all about. So for example this place mark represents winter quarters. Um, each of these bubbles contains a little bit of text explanation, just a very brief explanation about that place, what happened there, why it's important. We also included a photograph to give you an idea of what that place looks like. And then we also included a link to read more about that spot on a church website. It'll give you more history about that site if you're more if you're interested. So the other way to navigate this website is to go through the events chronologically and in order to allow users that experience we included this slider bar up top as you can see we have 22 events on this map and those can be clicked through one at a time so if we go to the first site the Joseph Smith birthplace here in well not here but there in Sharon Vermont and see what it looks like and again a little bit of text and a link to an external website to learn more about it. So we'll click through these chronologically just to show you the sites that we included and what the pop-up bubbles look like. We included the Smith family log home where Joseph Smith grew up, the Sacred Grove, the Smith frame home, the Hill Cumora where Joseph Smith obtained the gold plates, the Martin Harris farm, the Aaronic Priesthood restoration site, the Grandin Printing Shop, where the first copies of the Book of Mormon were printed. The Peter Whitmer Home, where the church was formally organized. We included some line features on our map as well. This one represents the journey of the saints from New York to Ohio. The Kirtland Temple in Ohio. And as you can see, the place markers for the temples are these really cool... Um, well, temple icons. As you can see, there's one for Kirtland, there's one for Nauvoo, and there's one for Salt Lake. So jumping back into that, uh, we have the journey from Ohio to Missouri, the Independence Temple lot, the Far West Temple site, Adam on Diamond, Liberty Jail, the, a line representing the journey from Missouri to Illinois, of course, the Nauvoo Temple, Carthage Jail, uh, a line representing the journey west from Illinois to Utah, Winter Quarters, Nebraska, and then the Salt Lake Temple, which we're all familiar with. So we also have this reset map button, which if you're zoomed in somewhere, you, you can always reset the map to, to start over and frame all of the events. So I want to briefly go over our um, KML file which contained all of this shape data and then I'll turn it over to Nathan to explain what's going on on the back end with our source code. Okay this is our KML file which I wanted to go over briefly. We decided to include all of our spatial data for the Church History Viewer website 
as a single layer, as a single KML document. So this is that document. The first part of this document contains all of the style IDs for the various place marks. Each place mark references one of these style IDs. For example, this one calls the Kirtland Temple icon, which is stored on our server, so that we get those nice, pretty temple icons for the places that we want them. So there's a bunch of these styles. If we skip down to this part, we get into the actual place mark data. We organize these in chronological order so that they appeared on our map in chronological order. The first place, so let's just go through one of these, the Joseph Smith birthplace. Uh, this name was important and this description was important because that's the data that ends up in the pop-up bubble. So we included a little bit of text description here for each point. We included a reference to an image, uh, an external image on the web. And then we included a reference, a link to an external website to learn more about that specific site. So pretty basic. That's that's our KML file. As you can see, it contains a, the longitude, latitude for each point, and as well, it includes a style, which I just showed you up at the top of the document for each of these place these place marks. So now Nathan is going to go over our code for our website and the JavaScript files that make all the magic happen. All right, here's our HTML page, which we've named index.html. Um, you'll notice we have the head and the title, and then we load some scripts that help the slider work, and most of that's jQuery, and so there's a link and two scripts, and then a CSS style sheet, and then this other CSS style um, that we can tweak. For example, this width 2700 pixels, um, we needed to adjust that depending on how many features we had on our map. And then we load slider.js, which I'll mention later, um, and another style sheet, and then openlayers.js so that we can get the map. And then we have our own JavaScript file called map.js, which I'll talk about in a minute. So when the page loads, we call the onload function init, which is located in map.js. And I'll talk about everything that init does. That's where most of the setup happens that allows the website to work. So we have a, a heading and some content, and then we have um, a, a reset button that will reset the zoom on the map. And yeah, most most of this other stuff, like this div here, is a placeholder for the slider that we use, the jQuery slider. And I'll, I'll talk about this later in the init function. We actually add content to this div. So we'll add a square for each feature in our KML file. And then the last thing that we have in the HTML is the map div, which um, is the placeholder for the, the map the map itself. Here's our JavaScript file map.js. At the top we have some global variables that we can access through any function on in the script. And here's our init function which is called when the page loads. The first thing it does is create an open layers map and it just puts it inside the div map ID. We've assigned that to the variable map so that we can easily um, reference it later in the script. For instance, right here, we're adding controls to the map, such as a layer switcher, navigation, and scale line. We then create a Bing layer, and we chose to use the aerial um, type of Bing layer. And we create our main layer, which loads the KML file. We decided to put all our features into a single layer and a single KML file. And we'll explain how we handled that in just a moment. We add these two layers to the map, and then we create or we assign a select variable here so that we can select different features later on. 
and we map some events to some JavaScript functions that we have at the bottom of the page. For instance, when a feature is selected, we call onFeatureSelect, and a similar thing for onFeatureUnselect. So I'll scroll down to the bottom and show you onFeatureSelect. So this function is called anytime page detects a uh, feature being selected. Um, it'll add content, it'll create this content which is loaded from the KML file um, and add that to a pop-up and put that pop-up on the map so the viewer can see it. Similarly, when a feature is unselected, we remove the pop-up from the map. There are some other helper functions down here like zoom to layer, zoom to feature, hide feature, and show feature which are pretty self-explanatory and I won't go into detail about those. Okay, next um, our map zooms to the layer, the main layer. We originally had some sample code from the lecture slides which did this but that was limited to some manual coordinates and we wanted our website to be a little more flexible so that it would zoom to whatever KML file you decided to give it. So we did that right here with map dot map to extent layer dot get extent. But this didn't work just by itself. We actually had to register this function as an event in the layer um, with the keyword load end. So basically what that does is at the end of loading it will call this function. And that's important because when we tried just calling this function at the end of our init, the layer hadn't been fully created yet. And so when we went to do get the data extent, it returned null. Um, so we have one other function that is called on load end. And that's what creates the slider at the top or the content inside the slider. So for each feature in our KML layer, we have a square in our slider at the top that corresponds with that feature. And so we go through each feature in the layer, we create the square and put it inside the squares div, and then we at attach a click function to that so that when you click it, it will do something. So we actually named those new divs the same as the index of the feature in, inside the features array. So that made it really easy to find which feature the user had clicked on. So once they click on, say, feature number three, it will actually look up the right feature from the features array and then zoom to that feature and make its pop-up appear by selecting the feature. So that's, that's how the slider at the top works. And we did it that way so that we could change the content in our KML without having to update our JavaScript file. This is really flexible and allows um, us to just change content in our KML and our website would conform to those changes pretty easily. So that's our script. This is slider.js, which is referenced by our main page, <coughs> and it works all the magic for the scroll bar on our page, the slider at the top that allows you to select the different features. Um, all this code was just copied from the jQuery website, which hands this out for free, so that's that.